Finally got my Tega maxed out. What the frick? Son of a monkey's bung all. What's up guys, this is What's My Game. I'm gonna show you the best XP method I've found and farm in SnowRunner. And if this crap has happened to you with your maxed out Tega like it did me, it pissed me off. Nobody's showing it this way. I want to show you how I do it. So Black River, Michigan, uh, the contest is food delivery. It's still the best farming method. But what I do differently, in my opinion, makes it faster and ultimately gets you more XP every hour. So check it out. It's better than the container one, the big thousand XP one in Alaska, all, use, all those things. Number one, don't use a trailer. Use a truck with a si sideboard or flatbed. Also, you want to get the high range transmission as soon as possible. And here's the location, pause it if you want. It's in Mountain River, Alaska. You can get it really early in the game. Later in the video, like it says, I'll show you how the, the best speed build and how to set all this up. But I want to focus, I'm going to do a comparison too with other trucks, but I want to focus on the high range transmission because that's the key here. What you want to do, if you're on the road, you might want to use the auto part. It makes you go the higher speed a little bit better. But I recommend to manually shift into high gear and then just leave it. Leave it in high gear the whole time. And with any truck, I'll show you later, almost any truck, it'll just stay in that high gear and not bog down. For beginners, you guys are gonna wanna load your consumables, consumables up while you're moving and start the contest while you're moving as well. That way you keep that mo you know, that uh, motivation, I was gonna say, you, you keep that momentum um, and that helps you to start on a high note rather than stopped. It just saves time. Um, while you're in high mode here, this is huge. You leave it in manual high gear and look, it just crawls up this thing. We're moving pretty good right here. I mean, I wouldn't call it super fast, but more important on this whole thing is to say, have a really good speed, but to keep yourself and I was gonna say, save yourself from tipping over because once you tip over, you're screwed. You lose so much time and it's worth having an extra couple of seconds to get where you're going than it is to go so fast where you're tipping over all the time. And I'm gonna show you how to mitigate turning over. And here's another piece. See where I hit that mud right there? That's always a part where it slows down all the trucks if you're not doing this method on the high range in manual mode. And look at this, two minutes and 14 seconds. That's one of my better times. So this is in high range transmission, which is what I want you to have, but this is in auto mode where you're not manually you know, selected into high range. You see it's in the A for auto. So I'm speeding up here because it's so slow, but look at this, I put it, this is obviously regular speed, but in high range transmission, this particular spot takes 12, 12 freaking seconds to get up here. You know, I know in other transmissions, maybe snow runner or off-road, it'll be quicker in auto mode, but just to show my point, that same section in manual high range is only five and a half seconds. So this is the, this is, I'm gonna speed up, but this is the whole run uh, with the same exact truck setup, except for I'm in auto high range instead of manually putting it in high range with the high range tran transmission. And so instead of two minutes and 14 seconds, the same exact truck does it in like three minutes and 43 seconds. That's a minute and 29 seconds longer just by not using the manual high range. Here's how to set up your truck. And I'm using this truck, the Fleet Star 27, blah, 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 because you get it so early in the game. You obviously want the high range and I'm putting in the basic engine so that when you're first starting, you can see that you can do this. Now, I know you don't get all the tires to begin with, but I think you at least get the all-terrain, which would be plenty. And so right here, I'm putting on the 42s because the other part is you need a stock height. You do not want to lift it. It's too top heavy on any truck. So you only need on this map, the stock height and you run to run dual tires. I'm going to show you why here in a second. Another important thing people don't talk about is bumpers. The bumpers, some of them go really far down and you want to make, you want to pick the one that has the highest ground clearance up front. Here's where I'm showing you about the dualies. And dualies is another thing I don't see a lot of people talking about. Go with the dualies instead of the single tire setup. You can see how much farther in the single tire is here, here versus the dualies and how much farther the dually tires stick out. It gives you so much more stability uh, and keeps you from falling over or tipping over, which is huge. Okay, so let's see this run with the Fleet Star you can get very early in the game. Obviously, I'm just gonna speed through it. But look at this, if you're in manual high range mode, this is the base engine, right? These are basic tires. It just flies right up there. It doesn't even slow down. The, the high range, I just, I think it's just, 
It's crazy. I mean, it's so much better. Look at this. It's going to go right through the mud. It might slow down just a tick, but it accelerates so much faster. And I slowed it down to show you. This is a really good speed. Two minutes and 35 seconds for basically the beginning game truck with just the high range transmission. That's pretty awesome. Um, the Royal BM117 is a popular truck. It's fast. It handles okay, but it sure as hell isn't very durable. This happened to me a couple times, and I totally gave up on it. I'm, I'm like, I'm over it. The same thing with the Voron. The Voron AE43080, 4380 has a high range, and the, the Voron D does not. So don't even worry about the Voron D in this particular thing. But this thing steers so wide, and again, it's also not very durable. So I don't recommend those two. Um, the Caterpillar CT680 is, is really fast, but the rear end is super light, and it drifts around all over the freaking place. And here I'm showing you the setup as well. Um, but this is another popular truck. An important reason is these trucks are popular for a lot of reasons, but they all have the ability to run the flatbed or the sideboard, which not all trucks have the ability to do that. You don't want to use a trailer because you have to leave them at the end of the, uh, the you have to buy them every time. It's just stupid. And here it is. I'm showing you the, the bumpers again. You want that bumper to be really high off the ground so you don't hit up front. And look at this thing drifting, right? But this is a, probably my second best truck that I've gotten the best times with. If you can keep the drifting under control on the road, look at I slip over into the wall here, but once you get on the road, it, it can produce some pretty respectful times again with that stock height, um, with the high range transmission, um, and obviously all wheel drive is important too. So this one is it coming in at a 232. I know I did this one, I think at a 224. Still not as good as the Tega, but it's really fun to drive as well. So I hope this helps you guys out. Please comment with your favorite truck and time that you've done on this contest. No cheaters. <laughs> Subscribe and turn on those notifications. This is What's My Game. See ya!